Welcome to this English vocabulary lesson on babies. Yes, we are diving into the world of newborn babies and learning lots of related English vocabulary. Like what other words can we use instead of baby? What verbs and nouns are used to describe the birth? And how do we talk in English about the baby's weight, condition, feeding, and much, much more? Make sure to check out the extensive word list in the description below. This video has come about because of the arrival of my nephew, Thomas Oag. Welcome to the world, Thomas Oag. I love you very much. And this video is dedicated to you and your mom, my sister, Pamela. Okay, let's get started with our English lesson on babies. Are you ready? The first word we will have a look at is, of course, baby. This noun has no gender in English. So if we need to inform the gender, we need to add some additional words. You would simply say baby girl or baby boy to inform someone of a baby's gender. Synonyms of baby include newborn, and this noun is used to describe babies from zero to two months old. The word infant can also be used to describe babies up until the first year. Other common synonyms of baby include nouns such as child, tot, and the term little one. Interestingly, in Scottish slang, we have two unique words for babies. My Scottish friend Lizzie tells me that the word wain is used on the west coast and barn is used in the east coast of Scotland. Let's move on to our next word, birth, which is a noun and it describes the event of the arrival of a baby. Let's take a look at an example sentence. The birth went well. The birth went well. Another word we can use is the adjective born. We could say the baby was born this morning. There is also the phrasal verb gave birth, which is commonly used. A mother might say, I gave birth to my child. Or we could say, my sister gave birth to her son in the evening. And we can also use the regular verb to arrive. An example sentence is, the baby arrived today. Let's do that one more time. The baby arrived today. If this is the first time you're visiting my channel, Learning English Pro, you're very welcome. My name is Jer and I'm narrating your lesson today. Make sure to subscribe to get regular updates. Next up in our baby vocabulary, let's talk about the noun weight. Weight is how heavy something is, and a newborn baby generally weighs about 3.4 kilograms or 7.5 pounds. Babies born with this approximate weight are said to have a healthy weight, a good weight, or a normal weight. We also have the adjectives premature or preterm. These words describe babies born before a full term of pregnancy and premature babies may need to be put inside a incubator. And this is because they may need some time to develop a little bit more. Something a lot of new mothers will have experience with is the regular verb to cry. We also have the useful adjective crying Let's take a look at these two words in action in some example sentences. Our first example is, the baby cries every night. Next up, the baby cried last night. The crying baby is loud. The baby is crying. A big part of parenting is understanding the reasons why a baby is crying. It might be because of loneliness, or perhaps the baby is uncomfortable. Another reason could be overstimulation, or maybe the opposite, boredom. Maybe your baby is wanting something, or perhaps your baby has hunger and wants some food. That brings us to our next noun, which is feeding, 
which describes the event of giving food to your child. We also have the irregular verb to feed. It's irregular in the past tense when it changes to fed. Bear this in mind as we come across similar verbs later in the video. When a mother feeds a child directly from her own body, this event is called breastfeeding. And lots of scientists and health services around the world agree that breastfeeding is best for your baby. Breastfeeding is also a past participle of the irregular verb to breastfeed. In the present continuous tense, we could say, she is breastfeeding or I am breastfeeding. And as I mentioned, this comes from the irregular verb to breastfeed. Let's take a look at this verb in a simple present tense example. She breastfeeds her baby. She breastfeeds her baby. And in the simple past tense, we have, she breastfed her baby this morning. So if you remember the verb to feed, here we have breastfed without the double E at the end, just one E, breastfed. And of course, breast milk is produced during breastfeeding, breast milk. Lots of mothers will use bottle feeding. This noun describes the action of feeding your baby with a bottle. And of course, we have the verb form, bottle feed. And this verb follows the same pattern as feed and breastfeed in the past tense, bottle fed. Lots of mothers will also use a breast pump. This noun describes the device which helps mothers express their milk into bottles. And we can use the verb to pump to describe this action. An example sentence is, Pamela pumps her breast milk with her breast pump. There is also the option to feed your baby with baby formula. In the United States, this is often called instant formula. This is a type of powdered milk used to feed newborn and older babies. And of course, what goes in must come out. Next up, we have the noun diaper. This is the word used in American English to describe the kind of cloth underwear used for babies. And in British English, this item of clothing is called a nappy. A regular verb which is often used with nappy or diaper is change. Let's take a look at some examples. I changed his diaper. In the present simple, John changes the baby's diaper. And in the future simple tense, we could say, they will change Chloe's nappy. And at some point, your baby will need to sleep and they can do this in the crib. This is what we call a baby's bed. But there are lots of other synonyms like cradle. Commonly used in America is bassinet. And in the UK, it is commonly called a cot. And that brings us to the end of this English lesson on babies. On my YouTube channel, I have lots of related English vocabulary videos. If you want to check them out, click the link on screen right now. And coming up on screen are even more video suggestions for you. Don't forget to check out the English word list in the description below, along with links to my social media. And if you want to subscribe, you can do that right here. That just leaves me to say, I hope you have a great day. And remember, keep learning English like a pro.